Hey everybody, Adam here. Just wanted to give you guys a quick note about this episode. Really important. I recorded this episode in a place that was not as noise free as I had hoped. This particular time, there's even a child crying in the beginning. If you hear it, let me know. Uh, so just want to apologize about the quality of this episode. Not our normal beer to talk standard, but the content was so strong and I was really rolling with it. So I wanted to give it to you guys at least. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks so much. Hi guys, it's Adam with the Bearded Tug Podcast. Just wanted to give you something really that's been on my heart for this year and I think it's really important as we head into 2017. How are you going to feel this time next year? Are you going to feel successful and pumped about what you got done this year? Or are you going to feel disappointed and kind of wishing that you didn't miss out on certain things like you do right now? So I'll tell you for first off, like I am very much in that kind of in the middle phase where I did some good things this year that were really cool. Some of my goals were fitness related. Like I wanted to run a 5k. I wanted to upgrade my SEO in my website. I wanted to pay off student loan debt. Um, but also too, like I did those things and, but I didn't read as many books as I should have. I didn't launch the podcast sooner. I didn't get as many weddings as I wanted to get, uh, you know, and those goals, I'm sad about missing those goals. And so for next year, I'm thinking, how do I want to feel this time next year? The steps that you make right now and in 2017, early 2017, are not just for next year. They're going to reflect what happens in 2018, which I know it's like, Adam, how can you think that far in ahead? Like, I don't know. Like we barely know what's going to happen next week. What is going to happen in 2018? What do you want your business to look like? What do you want your family life to look like? Are you intentionally making the changes and the micro changes that are going to breed the macro results later on in 2018 you know so something i've been thinking about this year i met with a friend of mine this morning and she you know she has a book coming out and we're super excited about that book and something we talked about was hey when you release a book it should be really good for you to have uh, some supplemental content online even if it was free blog posts videos whatever um, to kind of like share with that book because people are going to take pieces of your content in different ways. So some people are going to read the book, but then also people are going to be attracted to, you know, the YouTube video that's only five minutes and kind of explains like one core tenant. And so I said, do you have any blog posts or stuff like that? And she was like, yeah, it's kind of hard. I do about a blog post a month. And I was just like, I, I told her, I was like, no one's going to notice you when you post once a month. And you're not, when you write a book, you position yourself as an expert. And so if you're not pos continuing to position yourself as the expert, then people won't see value in your services and then you won't get hired or people won't buy the book or people don't want to, you know, buy whatever you're selling. And so I told her, I said, what if you wrote 20 minutes a day, just 20 minutes, you, everybody, every single person has 168 hours a week. We have the same time, full control of our destiny. What little tiny things could you put into your schedule that a year from now could reflect? And so I'll just do that math right now. If we did 20 minutes a day, that's about 200, that's 140 minutes a week. That's a little over two hours. But if you did 140 minutes a week times 52 weeks, then that is 7,280 minutes a year. That's 7,000 280 minutes per year if you divide that by 60 that's 121 hours in a year that you'll have spent writing or spent on your craft and so it's like it sounds so daunting to you know i told her i said hey you should write 100 blog posts next year 100 blog posts sounds insane to somebody who doesn't have a system for tackling large projects but the quote that everybody always talks about is like how do you eat a whale which I've never eaten whale, even though I've been to Iceland three times. It's like a thing that people do there. Uh, but they always say one bite at a time. And so what small things can you do now that by the end of 2016 will result in something so massive? And so, you know, my friend, I said, hey, write 
two posts a week, three posts a week. Because also, too, it's not just time that you'll have under your belt and experience and writing breeds more writing and thinking breeds more thinking. So like you might write a blog post about a certain topic, but then you're going to be like, oh, there are like four other topics I could go into on this. Let me expound to that and let me link to that. Also, too, is, you know, if you write two to three blog posts a week expounding on content and your expertise or certain things in the industry, uh, one of the things we talked about was at the end of the year, you'll have like 150 blog posts. And for those blog posts, I'm not going to prescribe that to any particular person, but I would say you could write a book, you know, put repurpose those, like re put it into Microsoft Word and figure it out. Like that sounds like a book to me. And especially for my friend who's already writing her first book, like you're going to have a second book ready. And the people who bought your first book, guess what? They'll be ready to, to buy that second book. And so I absolutely loved talking to her and kind of like pushing her to make those tiny changes now that will help us feel better at the end of the next year. You know, what little changes are we going to do now that can affect next year's results? The other thing too, I know is it's really daunting to say, you know, let's take on more work or let's, you know, Adam, I don't have enough time. And kind of like we talked about before, like everybody has the same 168 hours. Like take five things in your schedule that you do on a weekly basis and prioritize them. Are they the top priorities? Do you need to cut something in order to reach the goals that you have for next year? Do you need to not sleep in or do you need to wake up every day before 7 a.m. to go do the run? For me, in planning for my 5K, which I did end up running, which was insane because as a large guy, running a 5K is ridiculous. But what my fiance and I did was we ran three days a week and we only ran a little bit like almost embarrassingly a little bit but the coolest thing about it was when we we use an app called couch to 5k and it was really cool because it does like interval training uh to help you build up to longer runs and so like our first run i'm pretty sure it was like you know run for 30 seconds walk for two minutes and do this for 10 minutes and it was really easy at first. And then there's some in-between time where I was like, oh man, this is really tough. And that's where the grinding happens. But you're already in the habit of doing the three days a week. So having those smaller successes, it's starting with really small successes. So like, say you wanted to start waking up before seven every single day. Well, what happens in the morning is determined by what you do at night. And so what you do at night, you might need to say, how many hours of sleep do I want? How many hours of sleep do I need? Man, I should go to bed at 1030 every night in order to wake up before seven because if i wake up before seven i'm super productive if i don't wake up after before seven i'm not productive and the trick here is to tackle the smallest bits first and so rather than saying oh i want to go to bed at 10 30 and i want to wake up before seven and that's what's going to make my day a success like no start with the smallest thing that you can achieve first and so for the example of going to bed on time like i went to bed on time at 10 30. awesome you know, or maybe it's even smaller. Like I got into the bed before 1030, you know, and maybe I played around on my phone and I slept like, that's great. Like get in the habit of being that. And so those micro and small habits build the bigger habits. And that's, uh, that is how it's going to happen for you. And then eventually add on, okay, we're going to bed by 1030. We're in, we're asleep by 11. We're up before seven and you just keep cycling that. And then eventually it does become easy. It becomes routine. And, but you have to guard those things, obviously, like, Sometimes you're not going to be able to stay out as late, you know, or your really good TV show on it ends at 11. Well, like it's up to you. Like a year from now, do you want to say, well, I did stay up late and I watched all those shows and it's pretty great. Or do you want to say, no, I got up early. I hustled. And you know what? My business is better because of that. My life is better because of that. My family is better because of that. Those are the things and the decisions that you can make right now. And in the beginning of 2017, that aren't that hard. You know, it's not too hard to just say, I'm going to be in bed by this time. I'm just going to carve that out. Everything else is affected by that little tiny decision. It's not too hard to do that. You can do that. And so that's one of those things in those businesses that I love to prescribe and kind of talk to people about. It's like, what little changes can you do that are going to bring huge results? You know, so like I have a friend that runs a music studio uh, and by music studio, I mean, she does private lessons in the district. And on her website, it's a pretty solid website, but there's not a lot of content on there. And so I think 
it would be a little bit better, one, to do some blog posts. And I think her target audience is actually parents. And you need to target towards the parents of the children that she's teaching. But then also, there were no biographies of the teachers on the website. And so I was like, hey, this is a quick and easy thing. Most of these teachers that teach for you already have their bio written. Uh, you know, fill it with some SEO rich keywords, maybe, and add a photo, add the alt tags, of course, and make sure that that's good to go. And like, make that page. And, you know, it's really easy to make a page on a website nowadays. Like, it's probably like click and add in WordPress. Um, and so that was like one of the biggest things I could prescribe to her. And that was like a little tiny thing that is going to read a macro result. And now, if you like Google that person's name, because those teachers, they don't have websites for themselves yet, it shows up for the studio. And that's really cool. So people are looking up for that person. They go to the studio and they say, oh, I could get lessons from this person. That's awesome. And then, you know, then you're making money. And so, like, that is the main goal when you're trying to do your business is to, you know, have more people come your way. And all of that came from such a small interaction. Another one of my goals this year was to uh, pay off a large portion of my student loans. And my goal was to pay it all off, but I, I couldn't do that. Uh, but I did end up spending or paying about $45,000 off of my student loans, uh, which is pretty awesome. It's amazing. I'm really excited about it. But I had to make a lot of sacrifices. You know, to have that much cash to uh, pay off a student loan as a freelancer is really amazing. And it's a huge blessing. But there are a lot of times when I should have gone out to eat with some friends or I could have hung out or I didn't take any personal like retreats or trips or anything this year. I didn't see a lot of movies, everything. I dwindled down and just tried to save as much as possible and still make my business successful. And I was able to cut down that loan. And it's hard to pay off a student loan because that money doesn't go towards anything that like propels you. It's like retroactively paying for something, you know, but those little tiny things that I could do, those micro changes that I can make really helped achieve the bigger goal because there'd be times where I also took on more work this year, even though I felt like I might not have had to, uh, you know, for like a family session, kind of like we talked about in pricing for a family session, I primarily am charging for my time. There's not a lot of the cost of the job, maybe driving, maybe a meal or two, but for the most part, they're paying for my time and, and for the cost of business over the year. Uh, but with that, I would take on more family sessions this year because, you know, I charge usually for 500 to 1000 to 1500 for a family session, depending on what they're looking for and how large the family is. And I would do that even when I was not thinking about doing family sessions. I would say, hey, most of this is for business over the year or most of this is for profit. I am going to put this all towards student loans. And so, you know, family sessions are not my breadwinning, you know, uh, product per se. I make most of my money from weddings and corporate events. But, all right, well, let's kind of position this this kind of work that only takes an hour or two uh, in person and maybe an hour or two or three uh, in the editing and delivery process. And then, you know, obviously that money is spread out paying over the cost of the year. Uh, but let me try and position that money to go back to this goal of paying off the student loans. And so that was kind of how I tackled the student loans and use my business to like leverage it against that. You know, but for some people I know, like growing up with my mom, you know, we'd stop eating out on Friday nights or we'd only eat out on Friday nights. And like the rest of the days we were going to do leftovers and stuff like that. And those are just little strategies to try and build up a little bit. And I know it's hard because you say, oh, I'm only going to save nine dollars or you have to have the cost versus time argument in your brain. And oftentimes the time is going to be valued less because you're saying, hey, I'm going to give up the time, uh, but I'll have more money. You know, maybe it's $4, $5, $10, $20. But down the road, you know, after a month, if you say you save $10 a week, that's $40 a month. And that's only $40, but like if somebody paid you $40 towards your student loan or towards your goal, would you be happy? Well, sure. And so you have to like make that personal decision while you have certain goals to really dive at them and to get them a certain way to really make them successful. The last goal I had this year that I wanted to kind of share with everybody what, and is a good example of just trying to take on little things that can breed a macro result uh, was doing redoing like my SEO on my site. And Adam, I don't know anything about that. Well, luckily SEO uh, 
essentially it's something free that you can do on your site. You don't have to pay to write different language on your site or write, not like another foreign language, but you don't have to pay to write SEO friendly material or anything like that on your site. Like you just do it uh, if you have the time and the goal is to make the time. And so for me, I wanted to make sure that I ranked, uh, you know, for my name and ranking just means that you're going to show up for number one uh, or, you know, hopefully on the first page, but I wanted to be number one for Adam Mason. Now it's pretty close, but there was like an IMDB page that it's pretty hard to compete with IMDB, but it would comp- it was competing with me. And then Mason photography, I wanted to be number one and a few other SEO goals. And I have like 300 blog posts on my site after a few years, but I had to go back in and look at the language, look at the alt tags on my photos and all the stuff you can find on YouTube or email me and I'll send you a resource for it. Uh, I had to go back and kind of reevaluate what I was saying were these terms that people were looking for. I kind of had to dive into it, Uh, but all of that diving was essentially free. It just took a lot of time, but at the end of this year now, I've been found so much more from online resources, LinkedIn and a bunch of other stuff. I've picked up blog posts and uh, I rank in the top 10 for like 20 different keywords, which is great. So I'm on the first page for a few different keywords, uh, especially for things that I want to be hired by. And so that's really good. That's key. You don't want to rank for something you don't want to be hired for. But the fact that that's all kind of working and I still have work to do. And a lot of times I would just say, hey, I'm going to go in and fix 10 blog posts or I'm going to go in and uh, you know, something I had to do was like resize my photos for web because Google doesn't want to load, uh, slower websites. So if you f- upload like the full size images to your site, uh, and those are on the page, Google's not going to like that. Like you need to make sure that they're small and lean, uh, file size wise, which is hard as a photographer because you, uh, you degrade quality a little bit, but having that content on there and having it be aligned to my brand, my SEO goals, Uh, whatever the goals of that particular post were really helped solidify my place in Google search results for those things, which it doesn't necessarily bring me too much income now, but if I keep on that track, Google rewards consistency and Google rewards uh, expertise because the goal is to position your site as an expert in whatever you want to be known as an expert for. And so, and it's a little bit more specific than like wedding photography. It might be like a certain kind. Um, And so having Google see that and see that consistency and see, you know, I think it was like 50 or 60 blog posts this year is really good for building that SEO. And next year I'll keep doing the same thing and it's going to hopefully pay off even more. And so that's been really cool. Nonetheless, this is kind of a shorter episode and just something I wanted to give thought before the end of the year as we're kind of like goal planning and we have 10 days before uh, Christmas. So if you celebrate, you're like, oh man, we have so much to do and you're shopping and all kinds of stuff and I'm leaving in a few days to go to my fiance's family. But I wanted to create an episode that kind of just encourage you and help you get on your plan and on your way to see how are you going to feel at the end of 2017? So when we come up to resolutions, we think like, yeah, I'm going to start. And that's why the gyms are always full on January 1st and everybody's going to lose weight and it's going to be great and it's going to be awesome. Uh, you know, but the real challenge is, is how do you feel come like February? How do you feel come July? Like usually by July, I've forgotten the goals that I've set in January unless I look at the list. And so you really have to be super, super intentional now, you know, like start those habits now. If you want to go to bed earlier, you want to get up earlier, you want to work out every day, like you want to go for a 30 minute run every day. Well, start today and like go for a five minute walk. One, it's really cold here in the Northeast. And then two, like start with those micro goals, like do a week of the smallest goal that you can achieve. And then the next week, just crank it up a little bit. And you know what Too forgive yourself for not doing that 30 minute run to start with. You probably could do it, but you need to say, Hey, I walked today. This is what makes today a success. Tomorrow, if I walk a little bit more, it will be a success. And so those little micro goals and kind of like chopping up the the whale goals, if you will, uh, that's what we'll call this episode, whale goals, is you know a good way for you to get to where you want to be next year. Because you're going to feel super hype going into January 1st, and you're like, oh yeah, here it goes. But then come February, you're going to feel like a failure, maybe even earlier, because 
if you don't properly plan to do your goals, then it's not going to happen. If you fail to plan, you're planning to fail. And so the biggest thing that I say for people is to make sure, find what's the micro version of each of your goals. So you have five goals, you know, running, fitness, uh, business wise, blog posts. I want to create more community. I want to spend more time with friends. I want to read more books. What's the smallest version of each of those goals? Figure out what that is, chop it up into the smallest goal it can possibly be and start doing those five things every day. Those five things will naturally grow and you'll find more fulfillment because you're feeling successful and you're actually doing it. And then if you can do that for three, four weeks, that's great because if you can do it for three or four weeks, you can do it for a whole year. And then by the end of the year, you'll feel like a champion because you'll have done so much more and you know the process for tackling other new goals. You know, because by the end of next year, if you stuck on this plan, by the end of next year, you'll have systematized all those things. You'll have your kind of workout, you know, like some people always say when you're trying to get into workouts, you're like, you should uh, put your clothes out in the, the night before so that you're like, I already know what clothes I'm going to wear. This is going to be so great because that's the voice everybody has when they uh, want to work out. <laughs> um, and that's great. Like you're going to systematize, systematize all those things over the year and hopefully when you systematize it takes up even less time or it's like it takes up less brain power as well which will stress you out less too and you'll be accomplishing your goals so you'll be less stressed anyway and you'll be more pumped and to me that sounds like a really good recipe for the rest of the year so if you have any questions thanks so much for listening to this podcast the bearded hog with adam mason please 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 leave us a review on itunes it means a lot that would be my holiday gift that I'm going to ask for for you guys is to please leave a review if you haven't. It takes 30 seconds and we would absolutely love it. Also, if you have any questions or you have a goal that you're accomplishing, let me know. I'd love to hear about what goals you have for 2017. It would inspire me and I want to see how I can help you achieve those goals too. If you like this goal setting episode, shoot me an email at thebeardedtalk at gmail.com. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great end of December, everybody. We'll have more episodes coming out soon. Thank you so much.